I'm telling the same thing. Okay, I'm trying to see where this is. I don't see where it came from. I don't know. Sitting in front of me, to my right, 
the summer of your life, you are a family member. Please go to the foyer so that we may line you up as a family unit. If you are a friend or a supporter, if you'd be kind enough, I'd respect this family because there is a large family to sit to my left or to your right. At this time, if you'd be kind enough to do the transition, family, please meet me in the foyer. Friends, exit to the left to support this family. Peace and blessings to you and God bless. Family members, I will need all of this in some of this section, please. <coughs> you work here? I hear you. If you'd be kind enough, if you could sit to the far right so they're not more that was up. still waters. He restored my soul. He lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares to take me before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. Thy cup runneth over. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way we know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming unto the Father but by me. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give me ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace in my tears, for I am a stranger with thee in a sojourner, as all my fathers were. O oh, spare me that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Oh yes. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains brought forth, or ever has formed the earth and the world. Even from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. I shall wear a crown. Oh yes, sir. For a thousand years of thy sight. Our buddies yesterday. They are asleep in the morning. They are like grass, which grow up in the evening, cut down and worry. So teach us numbers all day, that we may apply our hearts unto us. You may be seated. Come on, let's come on, come on, let's give God a hand. Lee C. Franklin, 
amen, from Mount Ephraim Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. We have reflections from friends, Pastor Rachel Fields, Deacon Lather Cage. Then we have a solo, a, a First Lady Maureen Williams. Acknowledged Mr. Cause by Pastor Shalanda Williams. Obituary will read silently. We have, then we have the eulogy, amen, by Pastor Paris Johnson from Pleasant Hill Missionary Baptist Church. Then we have party viewing. Just some house rules. If, if you're not on the program, please do not raise your hand. Please don't do that. Any changes with the program will come from the family up front. Amen. If you are asked to speak, don't sing. And if you're asked to sing, don't speak. We gotta be we gotta be here and viewing, viewing by 12 o'clock. We have to be viewing by 12 o'clock. Amen. We have to go out to Jefferson Barracks. And so we just thank God, amen, for these house rules. And we just thank God for the new shine and light admission, amen, for allowing us. Let's give it up for Bishop, amen. Amen. But one thing about it, if you know, if, if you know the Johnson family, we are rooted, amen, of, uh, uh, of just have praise in God, amen. So we just let you know, amen. We just want to enjoy Jesus on today, amen. The, the order service come for a scripture reading, Old Testament by Reverend Mark Cross, and after him we'll have Pastor Larry Brown with the New Testament scripture. Let's give him a hand as he talk. Amen. Praise the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. Let me say that again. Praise the Lord this morning. For he is worthy to be praised. I don't know about you, but for me, every day is a blessed day. Each day that I raise up in the morning, I say, Praise God. Because he is worthy to be praised. We're here to celebrate. Home going of my big cousin, as I used to call him. He's my big cousin, Michael Johnson. Amen? amen. And I'm here to read the Old Testament. I didn't know when I was coming through the door, but the Lord always has a place for His servants. Amen? amen. And what I'm thinking about is there's a beginning and there's an ending. That's what we've been told, right? right? But I tell you, if you're in Christ Jesus. There's a beginning. But there is no ending. Why? Because he's prepared a place that's for us. And if we were with him, guess what? We're in a place where there's no gnashing, there's no gnashing of teeth. But they're celebrating. Matter of fact, all I can hear is holy. Holy. Holy is the Lamb of God. Amen. So let me go ahead and do be about my father's business and read the Old Testament. And it will be coming from the beginning, Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness and God called the light day and the darkness night. Yes. And the evening right. and the morning were the first day. In the beginning, God created. God created Malcolm. He's created all of us. Yes. We all have a beginning. God bless you. Mortality might be swallowed up by life. 
like he that have prepared us for the spirit thing is God, who also has given us the spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the body. For we walk by faith, not in ourselves. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleased. Let's give God a praise. Amen. We thank God, uh, Minister Cross and Pastor Brown, for the scripture reading of Old and New Testament scripture. Before we go forward and bring Bishop up, uh, uh, from, we good? Okay. We thank God for that. Amen. We just thought we was going to have to be able to move some calls out the way. But we just thank God. Let's give it up for Amen for Bishop John Henry Williams, the proud Bishop of the Bishop and Holy Spirit of the Bishop of the Church. Let's give a hand as you come. Let us pray. Eternal God, we come in the name of Jesus. Yes. I got to say thank you. Thank you. Yes. you watched over us last night. Yes. Gave us another chance to get it right with you today. Yes. You've been good to us. You have brought us from all directions yes. into this appointed place. If there ever was a time that we need you, it's right now. The family needs you right now. Not only do the family need you, the entire world needs you. God, without you, we are nothing. We just want to say thank you. Lift this family up before you right now. You specialize in bereavement. We may do it for a night. We'll be no joy is coming in the morning. God, we thank you for the life of Malcolm. Yeah. Your Lord, he changed over for your glory. Yeah, yeah. And we just want to say thank you. God bless his wife. Yeah. He bless his children. Yeah. Bless all his children. Yeah. I know you can. Yeah. I know you will. Yeah. Will you mind coming on in right now? And have mercy on PD right now. Let him preach your word. We know you're able to do all things in the name of Jesus. We said it doesn't even show will. Father, forgive us. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. We probably will get back to glory. Everyone for the Lord on our side. I don't know about you. I ain't got time to have two over here. All I done been through.
used to go on Malcolm because they used to be on radio like doctors used to be on radio. All these guys, I mean, Malcolm was known nationally. I'm telling you, he was known all over me. Then he switched over to Jesus. Amen. <laughs> they know him. He was in this boogie woogie thing. But thank God he got saved. Thank God. It ain't what you it ain't what you used to be, it's what you are now. All of us got some skeleton in our car. Everybody that did something, we ain't got no bend the door. If I did it tell you if I stole you, you'll go to sleep. But God did good. Matthew was in Doctor, in the other day they called the teacher professors. Uh -huh. Mr. James Garvey, y'all remember at the number one school? Uh -huh. I mean, okay. no, y'all don't remember because he ain't that old. <laughs> but uh, Mr. Dr. Gardner, we used to call him professor at number one school. So they took him to Springfield, Illinois, to go to Lincoln House. They kept me. He said, now nah, don't y'all go back no food. He kept the class, don't go back no food. He said, now nah, don't y'all go and bash me. They went to Abraham Lincoln House Ruby. And Malcolm got in Lincoln Bay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is going to Malcolm went up there and got in Lincoln Bay. All y'all see them. But Malcolm was a character. He was a good guy. He, he, he could see anything. He, he was the life of the church. I tell you, he, he loved God. He, he loved God. And I, I'm just so I'm blessed and honored to be in this family. If you can't get along with this family, there's something wrong with you. Because they can even eat. You see how fat they are? That shit no going down. But I just want to thank God for the family. You know we love you. All the brothers and sisters, they treated me like a real brother. I just thank God for my nephew. I mean, we just we just got a good family here. Yes, when something happened, they they gonna come to the rescue. Yes, now we just agree like everybody else, like you just agree. But we don't stay like that forever. Amen. We come back together. And, and number one, you ain't gonna make it to heaven anyway, hate folk. You better start loving. You ain't start loving. You better start now. Right? Cause Jesus is the best thing to have. I always tell people this, and I'm gonna sit down. Whatever you do in life, don't be called dead without Jesus. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise, amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. Thank God for Bishop, amen. We thank God for the words of comfort to the family, amen. Once again, amen, we're going to go with the, the order of service as well, because we know we have a time constraint. We're going to bring up, amen, Pastor J.D., man, amen. for a solo as he comes. Let's give him a hand as he comes. So good day. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. But when I, I look around, and think things over, all of my good days, they are with my better days. And I, I won't complain Sometimes the clouds hang low I can hardly see the road I ask a question, Lord Why? I 
see you. So I, I, I just say thank you, Lord. Somebody ought to thank God right now. Have he been good to you? Somebody ought to tell God thank you right now. This is a good time to take a praise break right here. Somebody ought to tell God thank you right now. You ain't told him all week, amen. But if my Uncle Malcolm was here, he was sitting in his wheelchair right over there. And he will raise his hand and say, God, I thank you. Do it on your own. Don't let nobody tell you. All you got to do is flag a flashback. That God been so good to you. Let's give Pastor Man a hand, amen. Yes, yes. I, I know we rushing for time, but don't rush God. Don't rush God. Don't get cute on God because you're rushing for time. It was time that He gave you to wake up this morning. So why you gotta change? You gotta you gotta act like you know God. Yeah, but don't rush me. Don't ain't gonna rush God. We thank God. Goodness of Jesus. Y'all too cute for me this morning, amen. Oh my God. We just tell God, thank you. Oh my God. Oh. You've been too good to me. I'm like Bishop now. Oh my God. Not only to me, he's been good to this Johnson family. Times at the time God has came through with this Johnson family. Thank you, Pastor Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Y'all put the wrong person up here, amen. 
And I don't know why some of y'all on the Johnson family, y'all looking at me like y'all crazy. Like y'all ain't never been in church. Like you ain't never, like, like Grandma Inez ain't brought you to church. And I know they have service like this too, amen? So he's not no stranger to this, amen? Let's give it up, amen, for all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, from Mount Ephraim Baptist Church, Pastor Lee C. Franklin. Let's give my hand as he comes for words of comfort, amen? God bless you all, amen. As I listen to this Williams talk about MJ to DJ, amen. <laughs> I sat over there and I got to think about Bishop Grandmaster Flash. Hey, I start dancing. Don't push me because I'm close to the head. I'm trying. About to lose my head. I juggle. Sometimes it makes me wonder how I keep going. Bishop said where God brought him from, amen, because I don't, I don't like preachers who ain't been through nothing, amen, talking to me. I need somebody who's been through it, amen. I need to let you know I, I, I filled out the paperwork and adopted myself into the Johnson family. Because it doesn't seem like everybody preaching the family, amen. So if y'all say amen to the Johnson, just act like I'm a Johnson. While I'm up here and I know everything's going to be all right. Listen, I, 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 I love that song. It says, uh, I've had some good days and some hills to climb. Some weary days and some sleepless nights. Paul, 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 he, he told us about that song. We didn't understand it when he was talking to Timothy. But in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, the sixth and eighth verse, he says, For I am now ready to be offered up. Time for my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight and finished the course and kept the faith. And he said, since I've done this, uh, just like uh, Brother Johnson now, this, there's a crown that's laid up, but he said, not only for me, but everybody who's in this church today, if you know Jesus, amen. But I got to back up to the first verse. He said, I am now ready. That tells me that he had not always been ready. He was kind of like Bishop. Amen. God had to Get him ready. Because when we first met him in Acts chapter 7, we knew he wasn't ready because he was at the head of Stephen. He was raising hell in the church. He was tearing everybody down. But then in Acts chapter 9, verse 1, it says, Yet Paul breathed the threats among the Christians. Went to the high priest again, letters that they may go to Damascus. Because the only way to Damascus, he wanted to get down there, but he's going to persecute everybody who loves the Lord. But on the way, Something happened to Saul, and I wish it happened to everybody in this sanctuary. All the way he met Jesus, and I don't care who you are, or what you're doing, Amen. Once you meet Jesus, then your life will never be the same. But he says, he says, I'm now ready. When we met him, when we meet him in Romans 8, 18, I don't think he was all the way sure. Because he was saying, but he says, I reckon that the sufferings that we are going through. And somebody said, what does that reckon? He said, I consider. I, I look at life. And when I think about it, amen, it ought to be better in heaven than it is down here on earth. But that's Romans 8 and 18. He just met the Lord, amen. Can we go 10 verses later, amen? Romans 8 and 28, he says, I ain't got to reckon no more, amen. Romans 8 and 28, he says, for we know that all Work together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are called to here. Family, these are your words of comfort before I sit down today because we got a eulogist. Amen. Matter of fact, we got a bunch of eulogists. <laughs> Roman 8 and 18, he 
says, I reckon. Romans 8, 28, he says, for we know. But this is what you got to leave here with today. Ten verses later, amen. Romans 8, 38. He says, I ain't got to reckon because I already know. But in 8 and 38, he said like this, for I am persuaded. That means that I really, really, really know. I am persuaded that nothing shall be able to separate us from this love that is in Christ Jesus. Heights, the depths, the powers, the principalities, the things past, the things to come. I flew all the way up here, amen. Got off the plane and drove over to a place that looked just like my hometown, Dustin, Alabama, amen. People look just like the people in Dustin. I feel at home, amen. I came to tell you, family, leave here persuaded. Don't let this separate you from Jesus. But allow it to say, draw me nearer. Nearer, precious Lord, to the place. Amen. Come on, let's give it up for Pastor Franklin. Give it up for him. Amen. We thank God. Amen. And we pray God traveling grace on your way back home too as well. Come on, let's give it up for Pastor Franklin. Amen. For those words of comfort. Now we have reflections from friends. Amen. Pastor Reginald Fields and Deacon Larry Cage. Let's give them a hand as they both come. Amen. Amen. Pastor Fields. Praise the Lord, everybody. One more time, everybody. That's the high praise. One more time for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Truly we honor the Lord here today. Amen for being here. Amen. It's a sad, glad occasion. Amen. I'm happy for my brother. Amen. I'm going I'm to I'm cut through the preliminaries. I'm out here to meet my bishop, our pastors. Amen, everyone. Yes. Here, take, they, I'm, I'm be brief, but it takes two or three minutes just to honor this one and that one and this one. <laughs> Amen. I love everybody. Y'all know me. If you don't know me, you know me now. Amen. Amen. Pastor Mike, we're so glad to see you. Amen. Amen. All, all of you that are here today, amen, we are here, amen, to celebrate. Amen. 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 This, this is not a home going. This is a going home. <laughs> amen. I hate to make the devil mad, but Malcolm was saved. I said Malcolm was saved. We go, we go all the way back. I was so, I was so glad when Bishop cut it off because I ain't going to tell everything either. Amen. <laughs> amen. But we go all the way back. Amen. We were puppies. In the hood, raised together, amen, amen, amen. But it, it was just I, uh, I, 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 I know MJ the DJ, amen. Malcolm was a member of my first band, 1973. Little Reggie and the 10th Planet, amen. I should have copyrighted that because now that's Chris Rocks, amen. He stole 10th Planet from me. That's it for Dutch Recovery. Amen. So y'all got a, a brainstorm or an idea, get it packed. Get it copyrighted. Amen. Amen. I can, uh, listen here. We go all the way back. Amen. Growing up together. Amen. I'm patient. Amen. I can go back too far. But this is my brother. All right. This is my friend. All right. Amen. I'm, I'm serious. Amen. Everybody. We see him now. We know things he went through later in life. Amen. He's a soldier. Yeah. I remember him dating. DJ. Yeah. I remember radio personality, Malcolm. Yeah. Amen. I remember serviceman, Malcolm. Right, right. Amen. I, I remember Malcolm. Amen. Uh, a, a singer. Yeah. Amen. He was the first vocalist and percussionist in my band. We played here, there, and everywhere. Right. Amen. Amen. And I thank God that he was saved. Right. Amen. His, everything about him changed. Yeah. I talked with him three, four, five times a week. Would have been ten. It was up to him. Yeah. Amen. I told him, I said, boy, I don't mind talking to you, but quit FaceTiming. <laughs> I heard that. I'm, I'm trying to eat it. It's already in the paper. I'm going to take up the whole screen. My man, no, stop, stop FaceTiming. He said, you ain't pretty like me. <laughs> Amen. That, Amen. That, that's the way we roll. Amen. Amen. We, we, Amen. we love one another. The last thing this brother told me was that he loved me. Amen. amen. Every time we got there, amen, let me, you know, amen, we, we always tell each other, amen, we love each other. He was saying to us, he called you and sing in a minute. And make up a song in a minute. Amen. Amen. He, he was saying to you, amen. And he had us in a thread. It was just, it was just three of us. It was me, my niece right there. 
Oh, well, Pastor Shiv, am I right? He thought he would sing. I'm going to do some alliteration right quick with six, I think. It seemed like to me, you tell me if I'm wrong, I start lying. Seemed like to me, he said, six songs every 60 seconds, six days, six weeks. Come on. Amen. Amen. Every, but you know what? If I went back, if you listen to that three, it was you and I and somebody else was in there. I don't know who that was. Oh, you don't know. I was going to ask you who that was. Amen. But if you listen to those songs, Master Three, if you listen to those songs, your daddy knew something. He knew this was coming. Then he loves you so much. Amen. He, he, I'm serious. He loves his wife and his kids. Amen. He was there. Amen, Bob. Yeah. Why y'all get quiet? <laughs> Amen. Back in the day, he would have robbed you. I was with him. We did some stuff back. We could beg Bob still. Amen. Take care of his wife and take. That's a real man. You said it good. Now, you, know, you don't know what you would do. Amen. Your family. Come on. Amen. Your people need you. I'm going to close with this. Amen. Like I said, Matthew will make up songs. And, 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 and my brother, my little brother and my nephew, he, he said, if you got words, don't say it. So I ain't going to say it. Amen. But I, 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 look, y'all going to help me right quick. Y'all going to say it. Okay. <laughs> There's a song that comes to mind. Uh -huh. Amen. It was by Earl Middle and the Blue Nose. It might have been Teddy. Uh, Amen. It don't matter. I'm glad my mouth will make on something to me. Amen. But me and him talk personally, up close, intimately. Amen. He would tell me, I, as he'd be in pain, he'd be hurting. He would tell me, I'm so concerned about his wife and her health. Amen. He would tell me about, well, you know, I hate, hate to be in the shape I'm in. And, you know, I ask somebody for some some time to help me out. He said, it, it hurts. Even being in a wheelchair, and I'm speaking from experience. Yeah. Amen. I, I'm not used to being in a wheelchair either. Amen. That 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 mess with your mind at first. Yeah. Amen. You feel degraded. You feel kind of messed up. Y'all ain't saying nothing yeah. to me. Amen. And it hurt him. Yeah. Amen. To be in the situation he was in. Yeah. Amen. But I preached a sermon to my sister-in-law through the Zachary Lee Church a month ago, and my subject was, "It don't hurt. It don't hurt now." Y'all think y'all been, been saying all your life. Y'all remember that song. And I, I'm going to, I'm going over here, and I listen, but I can hear Malcolm say, Amen. He read these, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I just sit at home, and I weep. But I hear him saying, but now all oh, that has changed. I'm in heaven. No more pain. And it don't, come on, hurt now. No, not now. Hallelujah. I don't know, but he said, don't hurt no more. And he said, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I just sit at home and I weep. Ah, but all that has changed. I'm with Jesus. There's no more pain. And it don't hurt now. No, not now. She does no more sleepless nights, Malcolm. And no more holidays. No more fights, Linda. And it don't hurt now. Come on, let's give God a hand to praise. Come on. Come on, let's give God a hand to praise. Ah. You bring a Deacon Cage up now. Then after Deacon Cage, we'll have acknowledgments and condolence from Pastor, Pastor Shalonda Williams. Then I know all of y'all have read the obituary already. Am I right? Oh, we want to give this preach man uh, uh, all the time he can. Amen. Let's give it up, amen, for Deacon Cage. Amen. Go ahead and put those hands in there. Oh, for the Lord, amen. For the praises go up. We know that blessing will come down. But this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I thank and praise God for being a part of this homegoing celebration of my big brother. Amen. The Reverend Malcolm Johnson. Go ahead and put your hands together. And we put our hands together for the new shining light for allowing us to have the homegoing celebration here. And Malcolm Johnson, he served at New Hope. Amen. Go ahead and put your hand. I say he served and worshiped at New Hope. Amen. For over 22 years. That's, that's a long time. In spite of the church having its ups and downs. Malcolm would tell you, I ain't going nowhere. 
He said they trying to take me out of New Hope, but I ain't going nowhere. If you know he was faithful, he was meek, he was humble, he was a gentle giant. And then when his mother passed away, my mother adopted him as a son, didn't she? Those, those of us that's here from New Hope, raise your hand. And you know I'm not lying. My mama adopted him as a son, and we took him under our wings as a big brother, amen. And we continued to just love on him, and he continued to just love on us, and he continued to just serve with us and worship with us for over 22 years. That's faithful. Amen. That's being faithful. Amen. It's in this life, it's how, not how many you can count. It's how many you can count on. And that's one thing about my big brother. You can count on him. I would often come up the hill onto the parking lot of the church. And the first thing I observed was the back of that black SUV. I said, my brother made it. He made it when it didn't feel good. Yeah, yeah. And he made it when he foot. And I know God is well pleased with this servant. Amen. Just like Jesus is a good shepherd. He's just another good soldier gone, gone on home. Amen. And you know what he's doing? The crowd of witnesses that's gone before us. Guess what he's telling us? Y'all gotta come out. Because he fought a good fight. He kept the faith. And he finished the course. And then he don't, I don't have to be let the work that I've done. Let it speak for me. Amen. I thank and praise God for the time that well spent that I know my big brother. One thing I did get a little jealous. Because he called me one day. And I said, what you doing, Reverend? How you feeling? He was a little down and sick. He said, I'm feeling good because mama didn't send me some. My mama didn't send him some green and some neck bone and some cornbread and some mixed vegetable soup. I said, Reverend, I got a little hate going on. But I thank God for Reverend Johnson. Now, let's give uh, the Lord a great big hand clap. Those of us that can stand to our feet, give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise. Let's give New Shannon Light. A hand clap of praise. Now give yourselves a good hand clap of praise. And before I close out, Sister Linda, and to the family, to his son, to his grandkids, he loved y'all wholeheartedly. Amen. And I say to you right today that earth has no song, that heaven cannot heal. Look to the hills for which come at all your hip, knowing that all of your hip. Come from the Lord. It's all right. You can cast all your cares. Because he cares for you. On Jesus. Amen. Bro, Montreal, you got to take up the mantle. Amen. Take care of grandmama. Son, pick up the mantle. Follow you and then take up and help with the family. Amen. We love y'all. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. We thank God, amen, for the collection of friends. What we're going to do, we're going to have our acknowledgments, amen, the condolences read, and then before Pastor Johnson come up, we're going to have uh, First Lady Maureen Williams going to go before him. That's what we want to do, to be able to set the table for him, amen? And we're going to go in that order, in that direction. Amen. Reverend Scott, who is my life, to Bishop, to the other pastors, ministers, uh, these are our condolences. New shining light. Church, in memory of your loved one, Minister Malcolm Johnson Sr., into each life, some rain must fall, but sunshine does appear. It brings it with a rainbow and a message that is clear. Please know that you are not alone, that we all hold you dear. Let faith and hope into your heart and keep your memories near. On behalf of the Bishop John H. Williams and the entire NSL family, we express our deepest sympathy, love, and prayers to our dearest member, Deacon Malcolm Johnson Jr. and the entire Johnson family. In it will be little things you remember, the quiet moments, the smiles and laughter, and although it may seem hard right now, it will be the memories of these little things that help push away the pain and bring back the smile to your face. Properly submitted, New Shining Light Church family, Bishop John H. and Linda Williams, founders and overseer, uh, Prophet Shalanda Williams, youth pastor, and Sister Ruby Glasper Johnson, clerk. Amen. New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Revelations 14 to 13. In his own way, in his own purpose, God our Father called the spirit of his beloved, Reverend Malcolm Johnson, to be 
with him throughout eternity. We are gathered here today to celebrate his homeborn. We are grateful to have known, worship, and served with our dear brother in Christ. We acknowledge that God is God who does all things well. His love is unconditional and his promises are true. He promised a place of peace and rest for those of him that seek him and do his will. When we reflect on the works of our brother and friend, we know that he is a receiver of all these great promises. To the family, we ask that you accept with Christian submission the will of God. While, he know, while we know that his presence will be missed, we know that your place in, in his arms is our, in our Heavenly Father. We encourage you to pray to be able to continue the works of the Lord and his eternal significance. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saint. Properly submitted New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. The Purpose Church family would like to take this opportunity to extend our heartfelt sympathy and sincere prayers to the Johnson family in transition of their loved one, Minister Malcolm Johnson. We pray that God would bless you with peace, strengthen you and his love and comfort you through the power of the Holy Spirit during this difficult time. Humbly submitted, Reverend uh, John C. Williams, founder and pastor. The name Williams First Lady. New Salem Missionary Baptist Church. Pastor Larry M. Brown Senior is the pastor. Brother Hosey Johnson, Chairman of Deacon Board, Brother Wilbur Glasper, Chairman and Trustee Board, Chairman of Trustee Board, to the family of Reverend Malcolm Johnson, in memory of your loved one, to the entire bereaved family of Reverend Malcolm Johnson, dear friend, brother, and to the pastor's office and members of the new pastor's office and members of the new side. New Salem Missionary Baptist Church do sincerely express our deepest sympathy. It was with great sadness when we learned of your passing, but with grateful heart we can smile, for we know he is now resting in the Lord loving arms of our Heavenly Father. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your thoughts. Properly submitted, Reverend Larry Brown, Pastor. Amen. Zion Baptist Church, to the family of Malcolm Johnson, the Omaha Brown. Nebraska family extend our deepest condolences in the passing of Reverend Malcolm Johnson, done by Kenneth A. Allen, pastor, amen, Eleonora E. Brown, church clerk. Amen. We would like to acknowledge world-changing faith church deliverance ministry, Pastor Mike Dumas and Pastor Reginald Fields. Amen. East St. Louis High, City High School class of 1980 to the bereaved family of Pastor of Pastor Malcolm Johnson Sr. We would like to acknowledge him. Uh, East St. Louis Senior High School Class of 1981. Uh, this is Venice School District Number 3. They send their deepest condolences to the Williams family and Johnson family. Jericho Lodge 120, uh, free and accepted Mason. This is to Brother Malcolm Johnson Jr., John C. Williams, Reginald Johnson, Derek Johnson, and Dean Johnson. The family of Malcolm Johnson Senior wishes to express their sincere appreciation for your prayers, thoughtfulness, and concern expressed during this time. We ask for a continued prayers. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. We'll take time out, amen, to obituary read uh, silently. Let's do that right now. And then and ask that after that, we we'll have First Lady Maureen Williams will come up and set the uh, table, amen, for the preached word for the eulogies of the hour, Pastor P.D. Johnson, amen. amen. Go ahead and breathe silently, amen. Amen, amen. Let's give it up, amen, for First Lady Maureen Williams as she come, amen. Let's give it up for her.
<laughs> she said, oh. Just a little bit of faith to know that action in the body is present with the Lord. I dare to give God glory for the life of MJ the DJ. Come on. You know God's good for it. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Trouble in my way.
do me a favor. Don't let them leave saying, wow, well, what a preacher, but wow, well, what a God. Make us all the more better as a consequence of knowing you and the power of your resurrection. This we pray in the only name that matters. Christ Jesus alone. Come on, give God praise. We reverence God, who is the keeper, sustain of life. To the angel of this house, uh, but to the bishop, let's give God praise for his hospitality. And I'm feeling some kind of way, because my aunt and uncle, they passed and came all the way from from Atlanta all right, all right. just to demonstrate the ministry of presence. Amen. Sometimes you really ain't got to say that, just show up. Amen. So let's honor Pastor Lee. Y'all ready to go to work? Y'all right. forget me. All right. But Malcolm was a preacher. Right. And so, Brother Cage and Pastor Fields, they they did his eulogy. Right. The word of eulogy, they yell in the Greek, is eulogy. It means to speak well of. Right. So they did their part. Right. I, I come to help them. Those of us who remain that are still here. First Thessalonians chapter 4. That's a good one. That's a good one. We're standing all over the room for the reading of the Word of God. If you're able, as it is the custom in my church, I don't know how it is yours, but let's just stand and reverence God together. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. Are we ready? But I would not have you to be ignorant, brother, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be, yeah man, caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We're going to hang our hat here. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. I want to talk. You may be seated. I want to talk and title this sermon for such as the time we have allotted. I want to talk about the therapeutic theology about transition. The therapeutic theology about transition. Transition. is defined as the moving from one state. Right, right. One state style right. or form into another. Right. Transition, Dr. Man, is the state of movement right. where 
where you are moving from where you are to where you're headed. Transition. Musicians, Chris Jerry, say that transition is the change of one key to another. Transition. Uh, physicists say that transition is the change of one molecular structure into another mutation. Transition. In sports, it says that transition is when you move uh, from defense to offense. Unless you're a cowboy. In every area of life, we go through transition. And some of us here can remember the days when we were younger than we are right now. You, you remember it was easy for you to run and not lose your breath. It was, it was just the other day when you were in the mirror and your hair was cold black. But now it looks as if something has happened uh, to the crown of your head. Why, why am I the only one that's going to be honest and say I washed the gray right out? of my head. Something about life Chris trains and teaches us that if you keep living you will soon change. Never did really understand of the Lord why it is in church people never really accept change because the only consistent thing in life is change itself. It, 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 as soon as you get used to one thing, something else comes up in your life. Is there anybody in here want to be honest and say, well, I'm in transition right now. I'm going through something right now. As a matter of fact, if I be honest, if it ain't one thing, it's another. And I know you be singing that song every time I turn around. He keeps on blessing me. But the truth of the matter is, or every time I turn around, all oh, hell keeps breaking loose in my life. Transition has not has not always been beneficial for me. Transition. And I need to tell you this morning that transition that frankly usually is an unpreferred location because transition it it, it disguises itself uh pastor Shug, it disguises itself as a tragedy and the harsh reality of christian of this christian war is that god moves us through the troubles and tragedies of our lives because you and i brothers and sisters we get comfortable with where we are Sometimes God has to irritate and aggravate you where you are in order for you to start that movement of a process that God has ordained for your life. So what he does, mama, is he hires tragedy. Almost like calling tech support. To ensure that the process of where you are and where you're going is completed. Death and transition, I'm proud to refer to the process of moving from physical life to whatever comes afterward. Death is uh, the, the cessation of biological functions that, that, that we know that's used to sustain life, such as heart stopping. Brain activity ceasing. The body no longer maintaining the systems, and it is it is uh, it is Bishop A. It, it is a universal experience for all living organisms. Though it's it's understanding and significance, even though we all know that we transition. The truth of the matter is, everybody want to go to heaven, but nobody want to die. Transition is that part 
that refers to what believers know to happen after you die. Which differs greatly depending on what kind of revelation you got about God. Pastor Brown, philosophical views, some philosophical perspectives is like uh, existentialism. They, they say that death is the end with no continuation. Existentialists are people like Jean Paul Satra who argues that life gains meaning because it is finite. And in contrast, others may hold a more perspective view uh, about death by saying uh, it's just the end of everything. Scientific perspective, scientist standpoint, death is considered the end of organisms' physical life. There is no empirical evidence of the afterlife and spiritual construct. And scientists often focus on understanding the biological processes of dying, such as what's going to happen to your body. And post-mortem. How? How is it that consciousness is no end when the brain shuts down? Then, Rick, you got cultural views where we've got all kind of rich and unrich traditions that relate to death and transition that involve rituals and ceremonies and spiritual processes and ancestor ridges and, and reincarnations, believe it all, kinds of things. But for those of us who are the called, for those of us who've been, yeah man, born again, for those of us who are of the religious sect, we believe that view death as a transition from the physical world into another form of existence. <laughs> Buddhism and Hinduism, they, they believe in, uh, in the moksha, which is the reincarnation into another thing. But John Taylor says, while we are mourning the loss of our friend, others are rejoicing to meet him behind the veil. In, in, in other words, he says that what you've got to understand that death is a part of life and God takes us from life to death to resurrection if we know who Jesus is. There's a story about, I gotta go. There's a story about a woman who had this teenage boy. She, she wanted her father to help, help talk some sense into him, help him, you know, plan out his life. And she said, Daddy, when you come over tomorrow, can you talk? Can you talk to Junior? Because, can you talk to Parrish? Because I need, he needs some motivation, some encouragement to make him get his act together, his grades together, and be, be something out here in these streets. So Grandpa came over. He said, hey, son, how you doing? He said, hey, Papa. He said, uh, yes, sir. Come on, son. how's school going? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. School's going fine, Papa. He said, have you made your plan yet? He said, what do you mean, Papa? He said, what are you going to do when you get out of school? He said, well, I don't know. Grandpa, I guess I'm going to go to college. Grandpa said, and then? He said, well, Grandpa, I guess I'm going to uh, graduate college. Grandpa said, and, and then? He said, well, Grandpa, I'm going to get me a good job. Make a whole lot of money. Grandpa said, and then? He said, well then, Papa, I'm going to find me a real, real, real pretty girl and we go get married and have 2.5 kids and a dog. And, and Grandpa says, and then? He said, well, Grandpa, then I think I'm just going to keep working and, and working and working and one day I'm going to retire from the work I put in. Grandpa said, and then? He said, well, Grandpa, I guess I'm going to get old. 
really, that's really, Jay, that's really what it is when we land in the setting of our text. Paul wants to tell the church in Thessalonica they are tripping about those members of their family who died in the Lord before they did. And they are wondering whether or not they're going to miss out on Jesus' return. So, so Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant. He uses this word ignorant. The Greek word for ignorant is methase. The term derives from a word that meaning that has the lack of knowledge or understanding. So it don't mean you dumb. It just means you ain't been advised correctly. He says, listen, I don't care what you heard. I don't care what nobody failed to teach you. I want to tell you that if you believe that Jesus died and rose for your sins, you will not miss his return. Look at your neighbor says, we got hope in Christ's resurrection. He says, he says, Derek, he says, he says, oh, um, he says, Christian grief is different than non-Christian grief. Because as children of God, we do grieve. But we don't grieve as those who, yeah man, have no hope. We do cry. We do start. Sometimes we even throw, Craig, we throw stuff against the wall mad about it. Yeah. Losing out a loved one. Yeah. But when we get to cry, when we get to, yeah, man, peace in the floor, wondering why has all these things befallen our family again? We know that this is not the end. Yeah. Norman Cousin says that death is not the greatest loss in life. The greatest loss in life is being dead without something. Emphasizes to essential elements for salvation and confession. If you believe that Jesus died, I wish I had about 10 people in here can fast forward to Sunday morning and say, Rev, I believe, I believe, I believe. If I can get 10 of y'all to jump on your feet, I'll make number 11 that believe in what's Friday on the hill called Cabra. He died. They hung him high. Stress from wise. Something else to happen after it. In other words, he says it's not a hypothetical 
situation is a conditional situation. This conjunction function, it introduces the condition, the possibilities, it sets the stage for what's better that's going to come after we die. He says, I just got one question. Anybody believe in Jesus? Anybody got a hope in his return? Anybody know with assurance that he lived and he died that they buried him in Joseph's tomb? I know y'all tired it, but I get excited, mama, every time I say it on Sunday morning, but that's not how. Yeah, man, the story ends bright early Sunday morning. He got up with all power in his hands. He says, if you believe that, then I want to tell you something. Oh, uh, God is going Give Jesus the word. Jesus is going to give the archangel the word. And with a, yeah man, with a trumpet sound. The Bible says he shall put one foot on land. I feel like right here now. The other, oh see the cloud, the time that was shall be no more. The Bible said that the dead, the dead, the dead, the dead in Christ, they shall, they shall rise first. Have I got a witness? But those of us who remain, we shall, we shall be changed. And I know, I know, somebody is asking Reverend, uh, how is it uh, that we're going to be changed? Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, I heard uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 51 says, uh, I want to tell y'all a, a secret. Have I got a witness? Have, uh, we shall, uh, we shall all sleep, uh, but we shall, uh, we shall be changed uh, in a moment, uh, in the twinkling of an eye, uh, at the last uh, trumpet sound, uh, for the, the trumpet uh, it shall sound, uh, and uh, the dead in Christ they shall be raised incorruptible have I got a witness and I've come to tell you for this corruptible must put on incorruptible have I got a witness and ah, this mortal must put on immortality have I got a witness here? Wind, this corruptible has put on in corruption. And this mortal has put on immortality. Then, then, all this is brought on the pass. The saint that is written Shine. 
Did he preach a word? Let's give God a hand of praise. Come on, did he preach a word? Amen. That's not how the story is. Amen. And we thank God, amen, for Pastor P.D. Johnson, amen, for the preach word on today. Comfort the family, amen. It's awesome service, amen. 
Let's give it up for these pastors and ministers who stopped by, amen. Let's give them a hand as well to show their support to the family. We thank God for everyone that played a part of this program, amen, this worship service. But we're turning you over, amen, to the hands of serenity.
Oh, oh. 
Just be careful to the rest of the sea that the water is left for the war. Be troubled that the eyes are shaped to be swallowed thereof. There is a river, the strange wherefore shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the God's power. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be holy. God shall help her in the right earth. The heathen rage and the kingdoms of the poor. He heard his voice. Altar, the Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our